Zeep. Zero in expiratory pressure. What is Zeep? When do I use Zeep? And how is Zeep beneficial? Well, in this short video, I'll be going over Zeep and the liberation of the mechanical ventilator patient. Last year, 2012, Dr. Martin Tobin wrote a editorial to the American Journal of Respiratory Critical Care Medicine in that arguing the need for TPS trials, that a spontaneous breathing trial with pressure support or minimal ventilator settings can reduce the workload by over 40%, and this may lead to false positives. Uh, currently this year in JAMA, a article came out that um, trach collar is more beneficial than pressure support for long-term ventilator weaning. So does this mean let's just go ahead and put everybody on a T-piece trial or a trach collar trial? Well, I would argue no. And the reason why is from being a respiratory care manager uh, educator and a practitioner that there's a lot of extra things involved in a T-piece trial or trait color trial. One is the extra equipment needed. So with the extra equipment there's also cost. The cost of the extra equipment which could be puts a lot of stress on respiratory departments these days. Not only the extra equipment but areas to store the extra equipment setting up extra equipment, the time to set it up with your staff members, your staff members obtaining the equipment. So if they had to go back in the department to get the equipment, if it's not readily available in the ICU in a storage area, then this takes time away from the respiratory therapist also. Another is infection control risk. So every time I'm breaking that ventilator circuit and putting the patient on a T-piece trial or a trach collar trial, that I am introducing a potential for infection. And I've seen in a lot of places people have the equipment, the aerosol equipment just hanging at bedside, and this is a huge infection control risk. Another is patient monitoring. So when the patient goes on to the TPS trial or on to the trach collar trial, I do not know what their minute ventilation is. I do not know how their tidal volume I don't know their CO2. I know their pulse oximetry, but this can be a late identifier if the patient's in distress. So that's why I would argue against putting everybody on a T-piece trial or a trach collar trial. Um, these days, we do not have significant respiratory care staffing. We're asked to do a lot more. We cover a lot of areas. We cover emergency room, floors, and then also ICUs. So it's kind of only beneficial if your respiratory therapists are dedicated ICU therapists, which is very rare these days. Now, what I would recommend is something called a ZEEP trial. And ZEEP is zero in expiratory pressure. And recently, at the ATS conference, the American Thoracic Society of the International Conference, my colleagues from the University of Missouri, what they did is they presented um, ZEEP and the role, how it is with patient liberation. And what they did is they compared ZEEP with out pressure support to various methods of a spontaneous breathing trials. And this d data was collected over various years. They've been doing this since 2007. So they have approximately six years of data on how effective these ZEEP trials are. And what they found out at this, their institution is their re innovation rates were much lower, approximately 4% lower using a ZEEP trial compared to a standard spontaneous breathing trial where you use a minimal ventilator settings. Now all ZEEP trial is, this is an example of a ventilator screen and I have a pressure volume loop up. And I've done it before and I use it mostly on two types of patients. One I would highly recommend if you want to start using a ZEEP trial is for cardiovascular patients, ones that have a history of congestive heart failure, 
and that are currently on inotropics or that were in the ICU due to their congestive heart failure. And another is severe COPD patients that have air trapping. So this example of just me decreasing the pressure support and I haven't decreased the PEEP yet, but a true ZEEP trial is no pressure support, no PEEP at all. So the first patient I was talking about is the CHF patient and why the ZEEP trial is beneficial in this patient is, is the PEEP in patients with um, a very dilated left ventricle, the PEEP kind of acts as a splint and it's decreasing the size of that left ventricle. It's just using that pressure and it's stabilizing that left ventricle and it can increase your preload. So when I drop that PEEP, it could allow it to dilate out again and if you don't have significant anotropics, it could lead to a, a flash pulmonary edema. So in these patients, before I drop the PEEP, I listen to their lung sounds, slowly drop the PEEP, and continue to reassess lung sounds before I keep them on zero PEEP for an extended amount of time during the ZEEP trial to make sure they're not going to have a flash pulmonary edema. The next patient is the patient with severe COPD. This waveform is an example of a mistrigger temp or ineffective efforts. So what I have on top, the purple waveform is the flow waveform. And I can see in the middle here, I can see flow distortions. And this is the patient actually attempting to breathe. And as you notice, the pressure waveform, it wasn't followed by initiated pressure support breath. So I know that this is patient ventilator asynchrony and they have missed breaths here. So whereas this issue is if this was a spontaneous breathing trial and I was using pressure support, my measured respiratory rate in this scenario would only be a respiratory rate of 12. However, my true intrinsic weight rate or diaphragmatic rate is 30 based on these missed trigger attempts or ineffective efforts. And this can give me a false positive if I'm looking, calculating my FVT, and it might be falsely lower. So a ZEEP trial, it's a safe alternative to a standard spontaneous breathing trial and a trach collar trial or a TPS trial. I would highly recommend it in patients with congestive heart failure that have been on the mechanical ventilator due to their congestive heart failure and patients with severe COPD with histories of air trapping. There's no extra equipment needed, so this decreases my cost, this decreases um, equipment setup, this um, decreases infection risk, and then I have expanded monitoring capabilities with the ventilator. I can see what their actual frequency is, I can see their tidal volume, so I can see if there's rapid shallow breathing. Additionally, if I have entitled CO2 in line, I can monitor their CO2 levels and make sure they're not climbing. So this was an introduction to the ZEEP trial. And there's a couple posts about the ZEEP trial on my blog page. Thank you.